Hello and welcome to a transfer special episode. You may be thinking transfer special deadline day is over. Well, yes, it is over. And on deadline day, we brought in a very young, talented um, striker in the name of Luke Plange. And I've got Corey from the Rams Review to discuss all about our new striker who's gone back out on loan to Derby County. First of all, Corey, thank you for joining me today. Um, you know, let's start straight away with him. How would you describe Luke as a player? Well, D, first off, thank you for, for having me. I've seen what you guys have done in the last uh, few months and everything like that in the last years because we coordinated before. And it's been fantastic to, to join you finally live. Um, yeah, Luke Plange. Um, yeah. Really, really good player. Very good young player. And I don't think the, the highest compliments I could pay him, not that he cares what I have to say about it, complimenting him, but um, is when the season started and we were looking at potential players that could break through from the under 23 slash academy, because Plange was not a product of our academy. He came from the Arsenal under 23s into our under 23s. So it's kind of like weird gray areas. Like, is he academy product? Is he not? No, I don't know. It's kind of that weird gray area. But when we were making our list of players that could potentially break through, Plange was not mentioned at all. And now he's, if not one of the first names on the team sheet, certainly in the top three or four players that you're going to put on the team sheet every day. He's disposed our senior striker, Colin Kazim Richards, who's relegated him to the bench. And Kazim, while old, had a fantastic season last year. Um, his emergence has also allowed Darby to, to try to not pursue a deal for Sam Baldock, which also probably wouldn't have been possible because of the EFL restrictions. But he's been able to slot in for a veteran striker like Sam Baldock. And he doesn't look out of place in this Derby team, which is full of young players. So I think that that's that's pretty much like he's just risen through the ranks so quickly. He banged in a lot of goals for the under-23s. And then we were like, you know, it was probably around November when we were like, you know, this kid probably could be on the first team bench sometime. And he went from there to starting games. And he's only played eight times for Derby, but he scored several, several um, three or three or four goals already, uh, including one at the weekend, which was absolutely an absolute beauty. I don't know if you and your – your fans and your supporters have seen it, but oh, fantastic it. right foot, lower 90, just arced, beautiful. You can hang it in the Louvre. It's a fantastic, fantastic effort for the lad. Um, so hopefully, you know, we, we were hoping that he would be our player, that we could continue, you know, our, our relegation fight with him as our player and go into next season because next season would be definitely have been a big player for us. But, um, you know, luckily we've got him back on loan for the, for the season. So um, in answer to your question, Luke Planch, young, talented forward, um, and you guys are going to get, you guys are going to get a good one. If, if current, if, if the eight games that we've seen is, is anything to go on. How would you describe him, um, in terms of actually comparisons in comparisons to current or former players, where does he stand for you? Is he like, sort of, I don't know, Jamie Vardy player who runs in behind. Is he more of a hold up player? How would you describe him for people who haven't watched him yet? Well, I think that it's, it's a strange thing because, uh, Luke, He's a, a bit of a slight build, taller lad, a bit thin. Um, he works the channels real well. He makes really good intelligent runs in behind the defense. But he's also got a very good ability to uh, stand there and hold the ball up for not being someone who's you would consider a kind of a hold-up target man, right? Big bruiser up front, kind of like a like a Christian Benteke kind of type. He's a slighter frame, uh, can make the runs in behind and can work the channels. So I don't really know really right now, eight games in what, what I, what kind of player I could compare him to. Um, I think he's just someone that's going to run the channels. He's going to work really hard. Um, and he, and he's going to, he's going to get there and, and snatch, snatch, hopefully the, not only the odd goal, but the, the occasional goal as well. So um, I think he's different to the kind of forwards that you have at palace right now. Uh, Osman Edward, obviously, and all these players a little bit further on in their development in terms of age. But, you know, uh, Edward's very powerful runner. You've got Ben Teke, a big hold-up man, big physical presence who can get the ball down, knock it down, get headers in. Um, so I think he's going to be a completely different option um, to, to what you guys have in terms of not being like, you know, this is not, you know, the second coming or whatever. Um, but just in terms of a second, just in terms of a different player who's going to work the channels, he's going to make those runs in behind. Um, but he's also pretty good at hold-up play as well, which you wouldn't expect for someone with, although he's tall, he is, he is rather thin, which hopefully he will build out because he's only a teenager. So hopefully he'll get some more muscle as he progresses. So talking about him being a th So he is only 19 years old and he's still got very uh, massive potential to go and develop into the play that we all know that he could be. But what areas 
or do you think that he can improve on? What are the main weaknesses that you've seen? It's only eight games and he has been scoring goals for you guys. So it's not an easy question for you to answer. But maybe you mentioned about him being a bit thin, maybe put on a bit more muscle and, you know, develop his physical strengths. Is there anything about his game that you think he can improve on? Yeah, I definitely think that the the idea of having him as a, uh, getting him into some sort of weight program to put on some muscle would be probably beneficial for him, especially at the Premier League level. Um, we know how physical the championship is. But the, the Premier League, you're dealing with, you know, a different kettle of fish altogether. And for the ambitions that Palace want to have and for the for the for the level that Palace is competing at in that mid table kind of trying to kick on to that that upper echelon of, of the table, um, he's gonna need to put on some muscle, but you have to do that smartly. You don't want to make sure that it you don't want it to sap his his pace, you don't want it to sap his skill by putting it on too quickly. Um, but we have seen in the past a player such as like David De Gea came to Manchester United, and he's obviously a goalkeeper, so it's not apples for apples comparison, but he put on a bit of muscle. Um, and, and he was able to get up to the physical standard as well. So I think, you know, that's probably the biggest area of improvement right now that I would say that Plange needs to do. And he's a young man, so he will he will come back. He will continue to fill out his frame um, and, and, and continue to grow. But I would also, you know, just think that a player like him is not going to rest on his laurels from what we've seen and from what he said. You know, I'm sure he's an ambitious young man. That's why he signed for a Premier League team. Um, but, you know, you want him to continue to work on everything because – you know, you can always get better at everything. Everybody can get better at, you know, different aspects of the game. So you think maybe, you know, learning a little bit more in terms of when when to make that break on trying to be in an offside trap or something like that. Sometimes he gets caught offside and it's not like a 50 times a game thing, but these are things that you can work on. But I think the biggest thing would probably just be adding uh, a little bit of muscle to his frame uh, as, he, as he fills out. But do you know that as well as I do, as you get out of your teenage years into your early 20s, into your mid 20s, you do tend to put on, put on a little bit more muscle or in my case, less muscle, more chub uh, to, as you, as you fill out your frame. So that's just naturally going to happen with him. So hopefully palace can get him on a program where he can do it smartly, where it doesn't diminish his skills and what he brings to the table. Yeah. Well, talking about muscle, I'm, I'm aching right now because I went to the gym yesterday <laughs> night. So if he wants, he can join me because I'm going to be there and he can join <laughs> me. We can put on muscle at the same time, but Going to the transfer fee, I've seen it on Twitter about Derby fans. Some Derby fans were upset. Even Wayne Rooney himself, he was a bit surprised about the price tag because I believe that a couple of days ago, he even said it that he wasn't expecting anyone to leave. So we signed him for a reported £1 million. For a Premier League club, that is absolutely nothing. It's risk-free, essentially. Where's your stance on that transfer fee? Do you think he was worth a bit more... Where do you stand with this? Um, that Palace maybe should have done a bit more to help Derby. Well, yeah, it's it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a strange one, and it's dual it's dual headed. So, uh, first things first, you know, from what we understand, same thing as you, the fee is in 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 around a million pounds. I'm sure that there's some sort of add on bonuses in there, a sell on clause or something like that. Not sure the full details, but we we also understand that it's around a million. Um, but we also understand that Steve Parrish gave the money, the one million up front for Luke Plange instead of installments. So that's fantastic for Palace to do that. Fantastic gesture because I'm sure as you and your audience is aware, uh, Darby's in some serious financial difficulties at the moment. They're currently in administration. They've had a 21 point deduction uh, this season for breaching FFP and then 12 for going into administration. Um, to be honest, the game on the game on Sunday against Birmingham could have been the last game in the history of Darby County because there was no owner found. The EFL gave the administrators an extra month extension. Uh, to find funds to, to fund them for the rest of the season. We know that it's going to cost about five million pounds they need to show uh, to fund Derby from from you know end of February to the end of the season. And Luke plans for a million pounds is, is going to go a long way to that. So in the business aspect of currently where Derby County are right now, you know, a million pounds, it's going to help the football club a heck of a lot. Um, I think I think any Derby fan would rather would sit here with UD and, and any Derby fan would go on and say, I'd rather have a football club next season than have Luke Plange as a striker. And that's no disrespect to Luke Plange. But, you know, if I said to you, would you rather have Christian Benteke up front or no, or no Crystal Palace? <laughs> I mean, there's Christian no Benteke. Benteke. We, yeah, there's yeah no I mean, Christian Benteke, Benteke, Benteke probably get a taxi, exactly. but you know what I mean? You, you'd rather have a football club <laughs> exactly, than you would yeah. rather have, you than you would rather have an individual player. So in that context, I think it's a great bit of business for Darby and fair play to Steve Parrish, who, who came out and he did say that Palace was in this situation you know, not too long ago in terms of administration and financial difficulties. So he understands. So he paid the money up front. Fantastic. That's going to help Darby. I think the additional kicker to that deal was getting Plange loan back, which was absolutely key to this because Darby um, couldn't afford to let any more players go because we're under a transfer embargo. We've not signed anybody. 
uh, since the summer. And that was, you know, kind of cast offs of the cast offs who are doing well for us nonetheless, but, but still not able to bring anybody in. We lost seven players in the transfer window. Didn't bring anybody in. Uh, it hurts. It hurts sometimes in squad depth uh, in terms of those numbers. So to get Plange back in on loans, fantastic. It allows him to continue his development. Um, Darby are a better team than what their second bottom league position are showing because of obviously the 21 point deduction, they'd be sitting 12th currently uh, if, if with all goes well with all the kids and all the cast offs and no transfers and all that stuff. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a fantastic bit of business for, for Darby uh, as a football club to get the money in. Um, I think it's a fantastic bit of business for palace. Like you say, for a million pounds on a, on a, on a championship prospect. Um, so that's, you know, basically risk-free, like you said, I think for the player, it's a fantastic movie. He gets the opportunity to go to the premier league. Uh, next season and, and and strut his stuff. I don't know whether that's a loan or he's expected to go into the first team. I don't think either of us know that because he was loaned straight back. Um, but I think, you know, you could make the case that Darby sold cheap, uh, but we do know, you know, beggars can't be choosers when you need money. Um, so I think, you know, in that case, it's, it's, it's a good bit of business. And I think for a player who's played, I mean, let's keep this in context. Luke Plange has played eight first team games for Derby. Yeah, I don't think so anybody big. know. No, nobody knew who Luke Plange was in August or September. And that's not being rude to the lad. It's just he wasn't our main focus when we were looking at the academy and the players that were coming through and the players we thought were going to have breakout seasons. And now he's one of the first names on the team sheet. So yeah, you love it when a player comes through. I mean, you've seen it with uh, with Mitchell as well as a fullback. Comes yeah. out of nowhere and you're like, wow, this guy's great. And now he's <laughs> developed into a... a one of the, one of the better fullbacks in the premier league. And, and, you, and you love to see that, you know, you love to see that kind of stuff. So, but to keep it in perspective, he's played eight games for Derby. He scored three goals, a uh, good, good return for a 19 year old. Um, but again, he's played eight games for Derby and you're getting a million pounds for him. So, you know, the transfer market is silly season. The January transfer market is silly season and deadline day is even more silly season uh, in terms of crazy deals and people get desperate and pay big money. You would hope on paper, if Darby weren't in the situation that they were in, that they could have probably got Plange two, three, four million maybe. Because look, he's a young English player. English players are overvalued, especially when they're young. There's a market there. Um, but at the end of the day, I think it's a good deal for all parties. Uh, all parties, because a million pounds goes into the coffers of Darby. We have the player back to develop him. He's going to get his opportunity to go to the Premier League and Palace get... A, a prospect who's going to spend another half season on loan at a team that they know he's going to play at because he's been starting the last four or five games. Yeah. So I think it works out well for our parties and you could make the case that palace, we, you know, Darby, Darby should have got more money for him. But again, on deadline day, you don't want to hold up the player. Rooney had said that before we had a young player go to Chelsea, Dylan Williams didn't want to stand in the way of a premier league move. Um, I wish Luke plans was still our player. He is until the end of the season, but it's a bit of a different feeling now because he is a palace. player. Yeah. Um, but you know, to get a million pounds for a player that's played eight games, realistically, uh, that's pretty good for this football club in their current financial state. If they weren't in administration and we could play some hardball, yeah, I'm sure they would have probably paid more money because I'm sure the you know Premier League level for Crystal Palace D. If somebody's plays, if somebody if they pay three or four million pounds for a player, it's pretty much risk free. You, you know, I mean that's that's the level that you guys are, are playing at. So um, great, good deal for all parties. Could he have got more? Yeah, probably, but. At the end of the day, in the cold light of day, in the hard facts, taking your emotion out of it, he's played eight games. He scored three goals. He's 19. A lot can happen with young players. They can burn out, get injured. They can hit a growth spurt. They can put on too much muscle. A lot of things A lot of things can happen. So, um, But most importantly, that that million pounds will go into the coffers of Derby to make sure that we have a football club, hopefully, till the end of the season. This might sound like a ridiculous question because, as you've mentioned, he has only played eight games, but... Looking at his ceiling so far, do you think he can do it in the Premier League in the long term? I think so. I think he's got enough. I think he's got enough to continue to learn and develop about the game. He's got, from what we understand, the right mentality, the right attitude in training. He works hard. Um, he works very hard for the team. Uh, Darby's in a tough situation right now, so he's going to be learning a heck of a lot. They're in a relegation dogfight. They've been docked 21 points. They have basically 23, 22, 23 senior players. Um, a lot of those are teenagers. So I think he's going to go in. I think he will learn an awful lot from this experience. I think that will help him further on. I think you're going to get a player that's going to work hard. Um, in terms of a ceiling, again, it's difficult to tell with young players, especially someone that's only played eight games. But I think he can go as far in his footballing career as what he would want to. Um, I think he's got all the attributes in terms of finishing. He's intelligent with his runs. He can hold up the ball well, like I said. Um, he, he's got a decent, decent pass on him. He can find his teammate. He's got a bit of skill. And I think if he continue to learn and grow and develop those skills, 
Um, you know, I, I don't see why he couldn't be the type of player that he aspires to be, which I'm assuming is a top player um, because, you know, the championship's tough. And when you get to the Premier League, it's tough. But sometimes when you're yeah. around better players, it elevates your game as well. I mean, D, me and you could probably sit in the Palace midfielder and look half decent because, I mean, look at what we're passing it to. I mean, we couldn't do any worse than Christian Benteke, but, you know, we we couldn't – we would look decent in, in the occasional game, right, when you're playing around. Put me in Manchester City's midfield, I'd look decent because I'm passing it to De Bruyne and Silva – and, you know, all these other players, Sterling and Asus and uh, Foden. And so I think when you put him in a different situation with different players, they're going to create a lot more for him. He's going to be able to do a lot more. Um, you know, he's got the ability, you know, we, we can drift out onto the wing. So maybe maybe he's a winger for a period of time. Maybe he plays as a central striker. Maybe he plays behind the striker. So there's two or three positions you could play in. But I think he's got all the attributes and the attitude to go as far as he wants to go uh, in his career. And I, I have no doubt that on his current growth projection, um, that he can be he can be a, a top player. Yeah, thank you very much for for that, Corey. Um, look, you can say he can play out wide, he can play out front. You gave good information to us. Only eight games. We'll see whether it works out or not. Um, I think it's been a surprise to everyone um, in terms of him just coming into the first team and then all of a sudden getting his Premier League move. It's, it's a low risk move for us, and hopefully Derby County do stay up because I think Wayne Rooney is doing a great job there. It's just such a shame that the owners. I've, I've put you guys in, in a position like this and, you know, it's not, it's not an easy position to be in. As you mentioned, Steve Parrish talked about it and we've been in a similar situation. So hopefully Luke develops his game and keeps you guys up and then he returns to us and, you know, you guys have a nice fresh start in the summer after Luke joins us back and, you know, you can actually kick on as a football club because it's been a long year or two for you guys. But as always, if you have enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe and also go check out Luke's content because we've got our player there. So I'm pretty sure that he'll be talking about him as Luke bangs in them goals to keep Derby up. So make sure to check out um, uh, Corey's podcast from the Rams Review. And yeah, that's it from us today. And until next time, up the palace.